Hi, welcome back to Bounce Forward with me, Tip Hall. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders past and present. A great question came to me from Brooke. I'm trying to lose weight and weigh myself every single day. Some days I lose a little or maintain, but most often I put on weight and it really gets me down. How come I put on weight day to day? How should I be using the scales as a tool to get to where I want to be without being too obsessive? So when you're trying to lose weight, it is very common to see fluctuations in your weight on the scales. This can happen for so many reasons and you've got to keep these reasons in your head when you're weighing yourself. And I'm going to go through the reasons that you put on weight every day and I'm going to go through how to weigh yourself because the problem is not the scales and not you. We're not taught how to weigh ourselves appropriately. So number one reason you put on weight is water retention. Your body can retain water for numerous reasons, including high salt intake. Maybe you had chips the night before with lots of salt. Hormonal changes, like if you've got your period or dehydration. So water weight can cause significant fluctuations on the scale. Next, glycogen storage. So glycogen is a form of carbohydrate stored in your muscles and liver. And for every gram of glycogen stored, your body also stores about three grams of water. So when you eat more carbs, your body stores more glycogen and water, causing that increase in weight. It's just normal carbs and carbs aren't bad and a bit of water. It's it's nothing bad. That can be day to day depending on what you've eaten. The next, which is to this point, digestive contents, right? The weight of food and beverages you consume can add to your overall weight until they are fully digested and then eliminated, right? Right. So this includes the weight of undigested food, the weight of your poo, um, and the fluids in the digestive system, okay? So your body is a wet machine and you've got to have respect for all of these different things. The next is muscle gain. If you are training hard, and I am training at the moment hard with resistance training and I'm trying to put on some muscle, and I have put on five kilos and that sometimes freaks me out. I've put on five kilos tip, but then I remind myself, hey, you are trying to put on muscle here. You are eating a surplus of calories and you're doing strength training, which is really important to build that muscle. And I think I am getting denser muscle, you know, and you've got to remember that muscle is denser than fat. So it's going to weigh more on the scales. Even if you've had a significant drop in fat loss, If you're putting on that lean muscle at the same time, you're going to weigh more, which is beautiful. It's a glorious thing, okay? Then you've got daily variations. Your weight can fluctuate throughout the day based on factors like your fluid intake, your bowel movements, your sweat loss, right? Weighing yourself at the same time each day, preferably in the morning before eating or drinking, can help to be a bit more consistent, but I'm going to go through that more in a minute. Then you've got hormonal changes, You've got four different phases in your menstrual cycle, stress as well. Oh my goodness, you've got to give yourself a break. And then you've got exercise-induced inflammation as well. Intense exercise can temporarily inflame your muscles leading to water retention. And also like I trained legs yesterday, pumps of blood into the muscles and I felt heavier today and I weighed myself and I was heavier. And at first I was like, rats. But then I was like, oh, I did legs. That's fine. That makes sense. Okay. You've really got to talk yourself around it. So understanding that weight fluctuates is very, very important to having a very healthy relationship with the scales. And you have to focus on long-term trends rather than the daily changes. So for a more accurate picture of your progress, maybe consider other metrics like using um, tape measures to measure yourself, doing your measurements, how well your clothes fit, your overall fitness level, for example. I am all about non-scale victories, NSBs. Some examples are like having more energy at the park with your kids or going down the slide with your son or doing a PB in your push-ups, fitting into an old pair of jeans, walking up the stairs without puffing. These are all fantastic NSBs and you've got to keep them in mind as well, non-scale victories as you're tracking your progress, because I am about tracking. I am about monitoring and managing 
where you're at and what you're doing because that's how we get results, right? I'm not about being blind and not knowing where you're at, but obsessing about the scales can be very bad. It can lead to perfectionist tendencies around diet and exercise and even lead to things like disordered eating. So the scales can lie, as you can see from what we've just discussed about hormonal fluctuations, water retention, et cetera, et cetera. It's never an accurate picture. And yet we live by this number on the scales. And some people, that number can determine a good day or a bad day. It really can influence people's moods. If you must weigh yourself and there are better ways to do things like calipers and measurements and before and after photos, which I would put before using the scales, but I do use the scales sometimes myself, but I do do it in a different way, at least weigh yourself the right way. Okay. The problem is you don't know how to weigh yourself. So let's go through that. You want to weigh yourself first thing in the morning, as naked as you can be. Okay. After you've used the bathroom and before eating breakfast or chugging any water. That's your baseline. You want to weigh yourself there. Now, you don't want to weigh yourself every single day because of the fluctuations we just talked about. It doesn't make any sense, does it? But if you weigh yourself every 10 days, it allows those fluctuations to kind of settle and it'll give you a more accurate reading and you'll be able to then put it side by side every 10 days and see, oh, okay, I'm tracking my progress and my weight is coming down. Hopefully fat loss, not water loss or muscle loss, okay? If you do have to weigh yourself every day, then make sure it's under the same circumstances that you are pretty naked first thing in the morning, before breakfast, after going to the toilet and not chugging a lot of water, okay? So it has to be under the same circumstances. Make sure your scales are on solid flat surface, not carpet. That can be a big mistake. and Whatever you decide, it has to be consistent, okay? Now, I get asked a lot about the weighing on The Biggest Loser. We had weigh-ins every week and the episode went to air every week. But in real time, that was about 10 days, okay? Because no one can do that in a week. 10 days is a good time for your hormones to regulate because when you lose a lot of fat, your hormones have to regulate again and that can increase water retention. So you really want to give it that time. One of the reasons I probably dislike The Biggest Loser now and if it was on TV now it wouldn't fly is because of the obsession around the scales and I think that it probably gave – a whole generation of Australians an obsession with the scales and it wasn't real. It wasn't a week. It was 10 days. So I just had to clear that up. So Brooke, I hope those tips do help you. Don't become obsessed with the scales. Become obsessed with measurements. That's really good. Before and after photos, personal PBs in your fitness and track those and really concentrate on the non-scale victories because really the best thing you can do with your scales is chuck them outside and run over them with your car or put them in the bin or take your scales and just use the scales in the kitchen and weigh your food. You know, that's also really good, knowing your portions, pulling back on your food and knowing, oh, that's what a portion of food should be. That can be really helpful and that will get you more fat loss than standing on scales obsessing about it because, look, the number goes up. What do you do? You say to yourself, oh, stuff this. I've put on weight. I might as well eat all the Tim Tams today. I'll start again tomorrow. And that whole all or nothing mindset and mentality creeps in and you go, I'll start tomorrow. Then you weigh yourself. Oh, I had all those Tim Tams yesterday. I've put on weight. I might as well start on Monday and then Monday never comes and it's a week and then you've lost a month and then you've still the same weight and you're just so frustrated and you end up hating exercise and hating eating well and hating the whole thing. But fat loss and weight loss can actually be really fun and easy and you just got to do it the right way and I think the scales it's not the right way to do it thanks for listening to bounce forward I love having your company so please dm me on instagram at tip hall underscore xo and let me know what topics you'd love me to cover don't forget to rate and review me on your podcast app happy days